boss is slow schnooky putsy what's going on all y'all welcome back to the worm i'm actually really excited to work on this thing i kind of forgot about it it's been in the gazebo since i built it maybe a year or something this hanging table is weird suspension isn't it it's got four more whoa. yeah see how unsteady it is it's got four more chains for the corner so this is under tension this way this holds the table up the other four you just just get tight enough and it keeps it all from wobbling around i mean it has a little bit of movement anyway i found this down there yesterday and i thought maybe we should uh finally finish it i like that this thing is i mean it doesn't look pretty now but this piece of pine on the bottom is actually quite gorgeous this is all like really nice blue in the sapwood there I was thinking I could just trim this bottom down a teensy bit and then this would fit through the big planer. I think it would be worth doing that. It would look so much nicer. And from where the hooks are, I do have enough space. I could trim it down. I think I can have a half inch on either side, get this to 12 and a half inches and push it through the planer. So let's do that. I'm gonna take this apart and the table. I can't remember what I made this out of. I think this was the strips that I put around the edge of the screen in the gazebo. Like I pulled those giant pieces of screen tight, stapled them, and then put the strips over. And I made a ton of them. I had some leftovers, so it's kind of like a butcher block style. I'd really, really like to run this whole thing through the planer too, but clearly it's way too wide. I could cut it down the middle. I just don't have anything super flat out here that I could lay this on to stick it back together. It also, these little corner braces aren't quite enough. There's a little bit of flex in this piece and the same on the bottom. I got some really wonky one and a half inch pine boards left over over there. And I was thinking about knocking these out and just putting like one solid piece. We can cut it real weird, have some knots, maybe even some gaps in here or something. Let's see where we can fit it. We might need to cut the top down a little bit too. This is just a garbage thing. Uh, it's usually where I end up setting my computer and water bottle and junk. We could fit it there. It does fit, it just barely fits. The other option is to stick it right here. Yeah, I mean, that wouldn't be too bad. I just feel like for a side table, it's way too wide. This is the one area of the cabin that in the summer is usually open or just like I leave tools there or something. But in the winter, I gotta be able to fit all my cool, my two or three coolers there because that's where I keep all my food. It has to be inside so it doesn't freeze solid in the middle of the winter. So, I don't know. Let's refinish it. We'll see. It'll either go there or there. I also... <laughs> I have a gallon of... I think it's like gray? I can't remember. Some neutral light color. And I bought it... Remember when we built the uh, two tables? Rebuilt one and built a new table down at the shooting range? For some reason, I don't remember why now, I thought it'd be a good idea to paint them. So I got some really cheap outdoor paint. <laughs> it was funny, I was at the building, building store and I said, uh, I need the cheapest gallon of outdoor paint you've got. And she said, okay, this is what you need. And what color do you want? I said, I don't know, you know, just a, whatever it was, gray. And she just went, like pointed at that giant wall of uh, color samples. And I was like, uh, can you pick one for me? And she, she chuckled and walked right over and said, here's the color for you, right? This one in the middle. And I was like, okay, great, mix it up. So maybe we'll cut this down, glue new edges on the side. When the glue's drying, we could run down and roll those tables. It's gonna be really fun because, you know, it's outdoors. You could spill as much paint as you want and everything's gonna get painted, so drips don't matter. I mean, it's an outdoor shooting range table. We might need to take the 22 and just ring a couple of those targets while we're down there too. We'll see. We'll see. I got one or two more days where it's way too hot and it's already 11 o'clock and I'm just getting started. We're like by one o'clock. I don't even want to be outside, but maybe if we're not moving around too much, it'll be all right. Okay. Just stop talking. Let's do this. Jeez. This tiny little project's going to take a lot of yellow tools. Let's see, perfect, 15 inches that way. We could kind of like squarely hook it around, maybe have it come out, I don't know, eight inches, nine inches. Couldn't quite figure out what I was gonna do with these weird pieces. This will be great. Ooh, yeah, eight, nine, something like that. We could use that, perhaps. 
something like that would kind of look cool, wouldn't it? And then we'll cut it there, maybe rip a tiny bit off the back so it fits flush in there. Hope that's straight enough, that's pretty lumpy. That's gonna be a weird piece. It's a little cracked, but it's quite solid. Cool. Oh yeah. That's gonna be sweet. I guess if I don't route this while I'm taking it apart, I won't know which sides to do. Looks far fancier, doesn't it? And then when we plane it, it'll be real pretty. What the heck? Who made this thing? 10 and 3 quarters inch apart? I wonder how I chose that. Well, we're gonna make it 12 and a half. That's about as big as we can do to fit it through the big planer. Well, it's a 13 inch planer. Let's see if we can fit 12 and three quarters in there. Should work, right? I don't know if it's really worth doing this. I'm cutting this down just to put this one piece through the big planer. Probably more of a hassle than anything. Wow, there's a lot of weird torque and pressure in here. Holy crappers. Who built this thing? You know, I just thought something. I don't think this is butcher block. It isn't butcher block when you do it like that? I don't know. Gosh. I think I probably put a, put a strip back on the side there. I don't know how much it helps to keep it from bowing this direction, but maybe a little bit. I should plane this with the hand planer before I put these on because you don't want to plane against the grain and you got one going that way, one going that way. So if you plane these the correct direction, you'd be ripping this all up. Yeah. Maybe we'll plane this and then we'll put those on and just barely, maybe I could sand the top of the other ones down. Much more nicer reader. Oh, 
Oh, you know, I really should have thought this out better. I wonder if I can do both sides at the same time without screwing it up. Is this the thing people do if they only have two long clamps? They clamp two clamps together? I think it's gonna work. Come on, baby, work for one more day. I promise I'll take you in and get fixed sometime. This is what it looks like before, because it's a little mildewy and dirty. It's been sitting out for a while. Look at this after it's cleaned. Purdy, right? It's pine. It's freaking pine. It's gorgeous. Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. I just spent like four or five hours in my car. It was way too freaking hot and there's really not that much I could do about it. I mean, I had to go get ice for my coolers anyway and I figured if I was gonna do that, I'd make up some other uh, errands to run. I think I, yeah, I kept the, the AC on high the entire time. It's seven o'clock now, usually by now. I've just gotten out of the shower, getting some grub, sitting down for the evening. It's way too hot in the cabin to do that. It kind of seems crazy to start a project at seven at night, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna grab the paint roller, go down and paint those tables. Be done by nine, take a shower, go right to bed, skip dinner. I did find some nice cold well water on my travel, so that's good. That table is probably dry enough to work on already, but it looks like it. there's like a 50% chance of rain tomorrow. So I kind of like to get a coat on right now. With it being this hot, it'll definitely be dry by the time it rains. Yeah, this stuff's completely dry. I like that Gorilla Glue. It's good for wood. Fills in all the nice little cracks. Ooh, man, I forgot how rough these were and stringy. I don't know how that's gonna paint. I don't really want to sand this whole thing either because it'll just make me sweat. Huh. Well, maybe we should just paint the other table. That one's a little more finished. I'm not sure why I brought this little tiny chip brush instead of something reasonably sized. What a nice color that lady picked. I'm really, really curious to know why I thought I needed to paint this. But this uh, jug of paint's been on my shopping list for months. It's kind of a nice natural color, so much that I bet you can't tell that it's even being rolled on.
Oh yeah, that's good stuff right there. Well, you can really see my uh, lack of carpentry skills here. I mean, this was built a long time ago and then pieced back together recently, you guys saw. And I can tell that was cut with a chainsaw. So you don't expect it to be perfect, do you? Do you? You know what? I think I just remembered why I wanted to paint this. It was for no reason. Just because it'd be fun. Because this is built like every damn thing out here. It's a bunch of homemade lumber nailed together haphazardly. And I haven't painted anything out here, but I think the cabin front door and the cabin front door is like the only thing I actually bought instead of made myself. I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I personally think it's okay to do things just because it's fun. I know, you probably disagree. You disagree. It's all right. You don't have to paint your shooting range table. I won't make you. <sighs> Gosh, look at that thing. <laughs> it's like nothing I've ever built. I'm glad I did that, even though it was for no reason. Dag nabbit, I forgot to bring my 22 down here. Well, I'll have to put another coat on tomorrow. If it's not raining, we'll just do a little planking. This did end up being a pretty stout, pretty fantastical shooting table. If anybody happens to be new to the channel, there's a whole series of videos building the shooting range, like four or five of them. Cutting the trees out of here, building that side just for 22s, building the side for speed shooting, the rifle range, the tables, I don't know, all that stuff. You can find it. Just go back a few episodes. You're smart. You'll figure it out. Beautiful, and it's about five degrees cooler now than when I started. Not bad for chainsaw made. It looks uh, a lot more finished when you actually paint stuff. What do you think, should I paint the entire cabin inside and out? My desk? No friggin' way. I think this looks nice to me just because it's different. Okay, uh, you don't worry about it, I'll clean all this up. You sit back and relax, I'll take a shower. You. A couple of you need to take a shower too. And we'll finish up the hanging table tomorrow if it doesn't rain. All right, we got some serious thunder showers in an hour or two, so let's see what we can do with this thing. Yeah, let's just see if that stuff planes. Ooh, that's all resin right there. I don't know if that'll varnish or not. I think this one's gonna be a little too fat. I don't know if this is gonna look good, but let's try it. Ooh, 
it's dark and calm. Probably better pack this stuff up. Let's cut it real quick. Holy cow. <laughs> it just got really dark. Oh boy. I don't know if that's gonna look good, but we'll find out in an hour or two. comes looking at the radar it's like a serious band of thunder boomers tito and i were out driving like a week ago and you could see one cell just a dot on the radar going across and we came north just after it passed and we're driving down this back highway and we're like what is that crap on the road and we pulled over and it was just piles of hail and it hadn't rained in weeks but all all the fields were flooded like they got one little cell it probably rained or hailed for five minutes at most. And looking at the radar right now, that's kind of what this looks like, but worse. It'd be kind of fun to get some hail, but I bet my tent would get destroyed. It's not the worst time to have a finished cabin. Although it is pretty fun to be in a tent when the weather's like this. Sheesh. We're gonna have a flood. That's all right, just come back later, would you? I just checked the radar and it looks like the rain's about done. We'll give it about five more minutes then we'll go get back at it. Maybe that'll look too weird. We could try it like that. It's not going to leave a whole lot of space for the chain, but I don't know. We'll try it. If we have to, we'll pull it off, cut this down, cut the other one down. Just, you know, just who knows. Stick this in the cabin for a minute with a fan on it. See if we can get these raindrops to dry out because I want to varnish this thing in like 11 minutes. That looks kind of cool, the chamfer flowing into the natural edge like that. I like -y. Ooh, I kind of like that part of it. It's not cut all the way back to flush. That looks cool. I was thinking about leaving a bigger crack there. I mean, you can't see any of this because it's underneath the table. That is going to be super stout. Do you think this will dry all right with super high humidity? Probably not. I guess we can just hope it doesn't rain in the next couple hours. I suppose we could do this in the shade and then set them out there. You guys will forgive me if I drip some of this on the table, won't you? Yeah, this is a different varnish. Oh, I forgot. This stuff doesn't really do too much to pine. The cedar really pops with this varnish, but this doesn't do much. I guess it brings the grain out a little bit, pinks it up. I dripped on your table. Sorry, patrons. Man, I'm dripping all over the table. So 
like I forgot a couple screws. Whoops. Oh, this is the side that's going to look cool. This was really blue before it was varnished. Now it just turned black and stripy. God, this is fun. <laughs> Oops, dripped on your table again. Sorry, jeez. Okay, ready? This is gonna look amazing. Oh yeah. Love it. I think this side's going to look just as cool or even better. That is good stuff. I like the little waves here and here too. You get it on there, you get it wet like that, and it takes a second. See how it's a lot darker here than here? You give it a minute. I can actually see it sinking in there. Ooh. I can't remember which tree I milled this out of, but it was uh, pretty early on. And I thought this one piece looked so cool, I set it aside. Clump up fast in the sun. What you think of that piece of wood? It's kind of too bad you won't really be able to see that, but. I don't know, everything in there is wood anyway, and a lot of it's really pretty, and it all just kind of mushes together, or I don't know, maybe somebody else would notice it. I think uh, at least the very top of the table and the top of that stand will have to get three or four coats of varnish, which is fine, because I can even do that after I put it all back together. Well, it's going to be a long time before that stuff dries, so why don't we go have a look at the shooting range tables. i got to tighten up those targets, because all those poles were wet green when I put them together and now the nuts are loose on the back and the plates are floppy. Ah, stupid biting flies right on my stupid head. Ah. Tito macheted some of these little trees growing here uh, just last weekend, but there's still a lot more shedding to do. It's really growing up. I mean, I could just use the 22 and shoot them all down just right at the ground. But I'm, you know, I'm busy. I got tables and you get it. Yeah, they shrunk up quite a bit, huh? Plug your ears. Let's have a look-see here. Oh, definitely needs another coat. But I think it looks quite nice. I'm guessing some of the rain soaked into it uh, just recently, so maybe I'll have to give it another day in the sun to burn out of there. Yeah, pretty good uh, shooting platform there. Oh, speaking of that, if I've got enough paint left, maybe I will do the rifle platform. 
I don't know why. I don't I don't care why. Just because it looked kind of cool. Quite nice. Brought my uh, race pistol here. It's going to shoot a few rounds on the big steel here, but I don't want to stand in the sun. Oh, that's all right. We can just make it a little harder. I'll stand way back here. That's ah, just fine. You guys saw in one of the last videos, uh, Tito and I shooting our 22 rifles from 125 yards using ridiculously slow ammo. <laughs> I don't know why, I just all of a sudden got interested in that stuff. You know, most of the stuff I shoot is bulk ammo in a box, you know, just rattling around in there. I get it because it's cheap. God, that already itches. But not too long ago, I found some ammo that was 500 and something feet per second, really slow. And I just thought it'd be fun to try. I've got some 700 foot per second ammo, which is also quite slow, but this is a full regular bullet. Whereas the 500 foot per second ammo is like half a bullet. It's 20 grains, this is 40. Downside is in a semi-auto, it probably won't cycle it. So you're gonna have to rack it every time, but that's okay. I'm just practicing my draw on anyway. One thirty seven. Did it cycle? Nope. One forty nine. It is even with the muffs on, I can tell it's quite a bit quieter, this slow stuff. One thirty. One twenty-four. If you get it down to one second, you're doing all right. In my book. Ah. I mean, you can't be perfect every time, you know. One twenty-three. We're creeping. One fifty-five. That's embarrassing. Three left. See if we can just go really fast. Probably not hit anything. See if we can break a second. Ooh, 122. You gotta be fast. Like, you gotta have some re reactionary. One twenty-seven. All right, last one. Just go full beans, full beans. 108, but I missed. I don't know if you'll be able to hear any difference on the camera. This is the regular bulk faster ammo. Oh baby, that's a lot different. That's super loud. <laughs> I like the slow stuff better. But it's all kind of fun. I just had to run down to my car to get my headphones out of there. And because there's so many deer flies, I wear this thing, which Tito's had for a couple years, it's like vented and it's treated with permethrin. So the bugs don't like it. Those deer flies like to be right around here. They're kind of in your wind shadow all the time. You can put gloves on cause they like to grab onto your hands. And I'm driving along at a pretty good clip. These are almost brand new gloves, not worn out or anything. And this stuff is pretty tough. And the dude bit me right through the glove. It's crazy. I watched a video recently on deer flies and they do, they like slice you open. And then I wasn't able quite to see what part of their mouth face it is they use, but they have a straw <laughs> that they jam way down inside you. Oh yeah, look at that. It's already getting red. And that's gonna itch for about a week. And I mean, my whole body's already covered in DEET. Ugh. So I got just got the third coat on the chain table and I got two coats on the shooting range tables and three coats on the top. That paint's nice, it dries really fast. Oh wow, it's only maybe been 45 minutes. Yeah, it's nice and hot in the sun. Totally dry enough. It really looks great. Love it with the uh, high sheen varnish on there. Funny, I think the base is the best part of the table. 
I think your average human being craftsman would probably wait a little bit longer to put it together, but not me. Let's do it. What the heck? Oh. <laughs> I mean, the... I built the table because it's supposed to be confusing for your brain, but for just a minute I thought I put it back together wrong, but there's supposed to be a hole there. That's the bottom, so this goes in this way. You should really try making one of these. You watch the video of me building this a year or two ago, see all the mistakes I made, and then you could probably put one of these together in no time. Seems to me it was easier to put this together upside down. This really is a lot of work to get this thing hanging right because all of the weight of the tabletop is hanging on this one eyelet. The other four, they're just there to stabilize it. The adjustment is being able to tighten the bottom of these, so it's hard to do if it's right side up. So I think we do it like that. Let's see. Yeah, you do reach. This is gonna bump into this guy because it's built differently. I just took one link out. We'll see if that'll still reach with the other chains. <laughs> so that doesn't reach that way. Got to bring this down. So we got to add that link back in there and then probably tighten both of these bolts up. Get in there. It would be a lot easier if these were closed hooks because they wouldn't slip off every time but that takes the fun out of it yeah see how it's bumping there so we got to crank this up until she floats we could crank this one a little bit too so let's see as i tighten this this should come up and hook, but before it gets too far, actually, maybe we could hang the other one on there now. So if you tighten this up before these are loosely hooked on here, you can't hook them later. Oh. <laughs> And it's working don't bottom out don't bottom out actually we can tighten all these a little bit too until they get flush with that that should help right no yes no yes <laughs> oh look at that just went tight Little flop, little flop. I mean, you don't want to go so much that it's tight because then it just starts warping this stuff, but it's not snug. Then you can't hardly use it as a table. And then there's the question. Yeah, see this one's a little looser. These opposite ones are tight. It's a little loose. That's quite loose. Hmm. And you can't tighten that one anymore because it's bottomed out or that one so we have to loosen these and then tighten this some more right does that make sense oh, that one's bottomed out no i did it too much now these two are loose these two are tight <laughs> that's decent and then the other issue is even if they're all tight just right flip it over put a level on it the table might not be level so then you gotta Kind of go through the whole thing again. This is the cool part. Look at that hanging it sideways and it just stays there. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's definitely not level. The only thing out here that's reasonably level are the floors of the buildings, but it's going in the cabin, so we'll take it in there, put a level on it, and see. Maybe we'll just have to go in there and mess with it for three, four days. But it looks good. Oh, 
It's a nice height for right there. That's not too bad. I mean, I'm not really gonna see it hanging like that though. Maybe it needs to go like that. That looks cooler. You can see it in the room. It's kind of a awkward place to put it though. Well, let's see how level it is. It doesn't look as bad as it did up there. Ooh, it's dead on that way. And that's freaking close enough. Wow, nice. I thought after I planed all this down and re-drilled some holes and stuff, it wasn't all the chains weren't going to line up just right, but that is plenty good. Well, it would be funner to see if it was sitting here like this. I don't know if it would be in the way. Oh, by the way, when I was uh, putting the next coats on the shooting range tables and had the paint out, I was thinking, I got half a can left, I was thinking what could I do with it, and I still haven't figured out what to do with the floor in here. Those of you that watched all the cabin build videos, like for the last year and a half, saw all this put in, and this floor, you know, it was chainsaw milled, it's aspen, it was put down, and then while I was building the rest of the cabin, this was just getting rained on, getting wet, it's got black spots all over it, it looks kind of gross. And I'd like to put another floor over top of this. I just don't know when I'm going to get to it. If it's going to be next month or next year or whatever. But still, in the event that I do end up with a Bernese Mountain Dog puppy up here, this needs to be sealed somehow. Can't have a bunch of puppy accidents on a raw wood floor like that. Everything would just soak in. So you can't plane it because of all the nail heads and even like trying, you could sink the nail heads in a little bit, but all the boards, because they're chainsaw milled, they're just a little bit too uneven. I really don't think you could plane it down and make it look good. You could sand it, use a pad sander, clean everything out of here. I guess maybe with some like 60 grit and about 15 uh, Ryobi batteries, maybe you could do it. I just don't know how deep these black spots go. I mean, a lot of times stuff looks cool if you get it really dirty and nasty or have it gray in the sun and then plane or sand off a little bit of it because it leaves some of that dark like in the grooves. But the thought I have is maybe just to paint this floor. I mean, there's already plenty of wood in here. <laughs> it's 100% wood. Everything you see is wood. So maybe painting this wouldn't be bad, but if I did it, I have to do it in some weird way. I'm not just going to roll one color on. I don't know, maybe I need uh, Sarah, the artist, to help me figure it out. I was thinking it might be cool to roll on a solid color and then somehow like fade a different color in from the crack. Like say, I'm just picking random colors. Say you painted it all gray and then you did red fading out into the gray or something. I don't know, just to make it look kind of wild. I'm going to definitely give that a tink. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't consider is that if you put it in this way, you can't see the hangingness very well. That might be all right. That's where you put the cuter and your charging cord. Probably shouldn't be doing this because it's still tacky. Not tacky, but your headphones could go through. Okay, I kind of like that. I think that's what we're gonna do for now. It's not too bad, is it? Once again, there's too much fun stuff to do. I pulled in six different directions inside my brain. Look at this thing. So on my table, you know, I got the projector up there. I'm going to mount the projector to the table eventually, as soon as I get it all tweaked just right. So I ordered a tripod ball. I know you can't, clearly you're not going to touch this and feel it. This thing is all metal. N-E-E-W-E-R. It's the brand. What is it? really nice feeling it was like 20 some dollars perfect so we're gonna thread something into that table projector sits on there i wonder how this comes up does it just slide oh there's some set screws anyway we'll get this put on there probably today and then now i'm just kind of jazzed about doing the floor i think i'm gonna do something with the floor in the next couple days so i'm gonna go rip off a few rounds and then uh, maybe should we reel this down we'll put it down there set it on just so i don't forget to do it later on today so fun to put down. That's the ball for my old tripod, which I kind of need back. Er, well, or should I should put this nicer one on my tripod. I might have to watch a movie tonight just to figure out exactly where to put this thing. I kind of wanted it 
the actual projector to be right at the edge of the table so it doesn't take up space. But with that big screen, you can get the maximum size picture if you go about there, somewhere around there. When you're watching a movie, you're not fiddling with a whole bunch of stuff on the table, are you? Does it matter if it's mounted all the way back there? You know what? You don't have to answer me right now. We'll figure that out probably in next week's video. Thanks for watching. We got two hanging tables now. Maybe we need to make one or two of these others kind of swing. Ah, but I want to do the floor and I have too much ammunition. Well, whatever. See you next week. We'll figure it out.